Arsenal trying to finish second in the Premier League and get above Manchester City. Someone with a keen interest in that is Noel Gallagher, who is in Toronto at the moment, kicked off his North American tour last night. Christian Jack was there, and he is with Noel Gallagher now. Thanks a lot, Luke, and Noel, thanks for being a part of the Barclays Premier League coverage on TSN. Pleasure. Let's talk about that team that's so close to your heart, Manchester City. You've seen a lot of rubbish teams over the years and a lot of tremendous teams over the last few years. Mm. Do you allow yourself to get disappointed that they've not won it this year? No, uh, no, not really. No, I thought uh, I thought when the season started we'd come second. Did you? Because uh, of uh, Chelsea bought better than us in the summer, and we didn't really the players that we bought wasn't really any any great players in there. They're all squad players, so. I thought we'd come second, but not a little bit disappointed at the, at, the, at the last couple of months. But I still think we'll finish second, so all's well that ends well. All's well that ends well for sure. It is only three years ago next week that you won the first Premier League title. You've since won two at City. Um, take me back to that day. Where were you when they won that? Manchester United fans celebrating up north, thinking they've won the Premier League, uh -huh. and then Balotelli to Aguero, 3-2 Premier League yeah. champions. I was in a bar in uh, Santiago in Chile at 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And uh, it was the most exhausting day of my life. I think there was, a, I think there was, a, there's, there was four City fans on the tour that I was on then, and a couple of Liverpool supporters. And uh, it was just crazy watching it all unfold and in Spanish commentary and not really knowing what was going on. But um, when the goal went in, it was insane. Yeah, it's just the, the greatest day ever. You've been a fan for over 40 years. You've been on the Kip Axe at the old main road. You've mm. played at, the main, at that main road stadium a number of times. What does it mean for you to see that team win that Premier League and, and finally be champions of England? What did it mean to you? Uh, well, it's everything. It made the kind of 36 years or whatever it was that we went without winning anything all worth it. You know, all those times that the supporters went when we were in the old third division and packed out the stadium playing like York and no doubt Preston right. um, made it all kind of worthwhile somehow you know what I mean and uh, it's a, it was a testament to the supporters to, that kept the club going that made the club a viable uh, purchase for the Sheikh to come and spend all his lovely money right. on those great players yeah. rags to riches for sure mm. um, it's only been a couple of years since but as the years go by do you think you'll always look at those players so differently with a special part of it yeah, or think, those yeah. 11 those 12 13 who won that for you well i think there's the it feels in the summer it might come to the be at the end of an era right at city uh noises are yaya might leave and milner and um you know nasri and so that that team that won the two titles might get broken up so uh yeah, once you take Yaya out of that midfield, it is the end of an era. And yeah, we're, all City fans will look back on that great, that great rise to two titles in three years as probably the greatest moment in our history so do you, far. Do you think that that transition you mentioned then, or do you think that's necessary now? Maybe, yeah, of course it is. You've yeah. got to move on, yeah. Yeah. You know, like, um, for instance, if we'd have had, uh, what's his face, who plays for Chelsea, Matic this year, mm. Instead of Yaya, we may well have won the league. But if we didn't have Yaya last year, we would have won. So the clubs, right. the clubs, they've always got to keep going forward and uh, identifying players that maybe we don't know about yet. But um, our owners have yet to put a foot wrong. And uh, we'll see what they do in the summer. I'm sure they get it right. I want to talk to you about that in a minute. We'll go back to Luke and talk about Hull in a second. But I'll be back here with Noel in a second. And I want to also ask him about one of his heroes, Mario Balotelli. Thanks, fellas. Just listening to Luke and Jason there talk about relegation battles and take my mind back to when Man City were in relegation battles not that long ago. What, does it, mm. what would you say to the fans out there who say, I don't want my team to be bought by rich, expensive owners changing the identity? Well, it's worked for us. I mean, I, you know, I, go with it. <laughs> yeah. They've done I'm a great job, haven't they, the owners They've been Man brilliant. They've, like I said before, they've, they've yet to put a foot wrong and they've got some big decisions to make in the summer. But um, they've got to be the most revered owners in world football. Mm. We all love them up there. They've been great. The chairman, Khaldun, is great. And, you know, the, sh the sheikh was as good as his word when he took it over and he said he was going to make us a powerhouse and he's done it, you know, so. Yes, and underneath them you've got Soriano, Beggary Stein. They've got decisions to make about Manuel Pellegrini. Do you think Manuel Pellegrini be the manager next season at City? Um, I 
I don't think many City fans, I don't think the majority of City fans would want him out. You've never, we haven't seen any banners in the stadium or any chanting. But if, as we're led to believe, two of the three most coveted managers in football, uh, i.e. Klopp and Ancelotti, are going to be on the market this yeah. summer, then somebody's got a decision to make. Um, are they going to hang on for Guardiola? So it's going to be interesting, but I don't think anybody wants him out, but I'm not sure anybody would be too unhappy okay. if, because the owners must have a plan, do you know what I mean, if, if he went. I want to take you back to that title-winning team, and I've, I've, I've since seen an interview you, Matt, you had with Mario, and you had the pleasure of meeting Mario, and you, you almost had stars in your eyes as you interviewed Mario. He's a, he's, he's a different character, isn't he? What, he's do, you, what, what do you make of um, his struggles at Liverpool this season? Uh, I think it's kind of married in with the struggles of Liverpool's team itself. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's uh, Mario is not the kind of player that you can spend all your budget on and hang your hat on it, he's never gonna he's, he's never gonna be a Suarez type player. He was a great what he was if you've got four great forwards and he's one of them then he does alright, you know what I mean? He was great for us though, but I think most people loved him for his character. Yeah. And, uh, and you did too, didn't you? Of course, yeah, still do. The Maverick. Think, really. Yeah, he's brilliant. He's uh But when you meet him, which I've met him a few times, he's just like a He's just like a lovely lad, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, he's got a screw loose somewhere, though. You know. <laughs> That's what maybe makes him so special. Yeah, we'll, come, we'll come back to, to Noel after the break and uh, head back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Luke. Luke wants to know whether you would take Jose Mourinho at Manchester City. Uh, no. No. Why? No. Um, because I would have taken him before he's gone to Chelsea this time. I see. But he seems to have, uh, his hypocrisy seems to be no, no bounds at the minute. Right. And uh, he's like the Floyd Mayweather of the Premier League. It's like nobody likes him. We don't want to like him. Uh, but we respect him because he's a winner, you know right. what I mean? But um, I would have liked to have seen him at City before Pellegrini, but not now. Forgive me for using a line out of the book of Noel Gallagher, but it's a case of what's the story, boring glory with Chelsea this season <laughs> a good. little bit. Um, what about that? Do you think they've been boring? No, 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 no. Or do you no. think it's just what you need to do for winners? No, they deserve a champions. And when has any of Mourinho's teams been any different? You right. know, they get to a certain point in the season and they shut it up. You know, right. so, uh, I don't know what the. It's only Arsenal fans chanting <laughs> about that. Anyway, who cares about Arsenal? Well, they were the ones who were doing it in the first place, weren't they? One 0 to the Arsenal back. No, nobody's bothered about Arsenal. No, no exactly. One. So, what about Manchester United? Are you? Uh, Exactly. Yeah. Um, we'll use a little line there from an old commercial. <laughs> um, are you concerned a little bit about the extra money that they spent, or do you still think they've got a long way to go to catch anywhere close to the quality that you've got with the boys of Aguero and Silva and those guys are staying around? I'd have thought the £150 million they spent last summer might be the worst £150 million spent yeah. ever because most of those Dimery has not come up with the goods Farkow's no. useless yeah. and what's the little fella Herrera he wouldn't even get in our youth team um, the keeper's probably going to go they needs another 200 million throwing at it and added to all that the manager's not very good so no. um they don't burn me at all. So you're not, not worried about them at all? The quiet, the, the quiet neighbours, not so the, the noisy neighbours, that's for sure. Just not interested in them. No. Yeah. What is it about, for people who don't know, the, the, the dis what is it that you really despise about Man United? <laughs> Apart from the geography facts and everything else, what, what, what is it that when you look at that football club compared to your club that disappoints a lot, you? A lot of it was wrapped up in Alex Ferguson, right. I've got to say. Um, the most one-eyed, hypocritical entity in world football. Um, just the fact that they exist. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And now your team has come along and beaten them twice in the last three years. It's yeah. going to give you a tremendous all, satisfaction. Yeah, it was almost like, uh, you know, the Jedi's triumphing over the, uh, the evil empire in Star Wars, don't you think? Yeah, oh, no doubt. What about yeah. the 6-1 game? What were you always thinking Well, that? Uh, that was the first, that, was, that, was, that happened on the afternoon of my first ever solo gig. I was watching it in a hotel room in Dublin. And... Uh, yeah, I think I only stopped laughing about two weeks ago. <laughs>
Favourite part for you in that game, I've, I've heard you say it before, Jekyll scores again at the 90th minute, again yeah. and again, and he scores again, and he, and he doesn't even know the score. He doesn't know what score it is. He's no, give up. No, neither did I. Uh, yeah. it, was, uh, it was a great day. It was yeah. a great, it should have been 10, by the way. It could have been 10. Well, no, it's been a pleasure having you on the Barclays Premier League coverage. No worries, Thanks so much for everything. No worries, Con and uh, great job last night with the concert, and good luck again tonight. Thank Noel's new album is available everywhere where you know where you can get it. Thanks again for joining us, and uh, back to you guys.